Hello, my name is Jeff Chilton, and I'm the president of NAMEX, North American Medicinal Mushroom Extracts. And I'm going to talk to you today about quality control of medicinal mushroom products. And first, let me define the problem in the medicinal mushroom industry and how our NAMEX testing protocol has solved it. There's a wide variability in current medicinal mushroom products because there's been a lack of standards for production and a lack of testing methods necessary to guarantee product quality. So until recently, the active compounds in the majority of commercial products haven't even been specified. Now the NAMEX testing protocol has demonstrated that the overall chemical composition and the actual levels of active compounds can be evaluated using two to three of the main active constituents. But first, let's talk about the fungal life cycle because we really need to understand what the plant parts are. So starting off with spores, mushrooms do not have seeds, they have spores. The spores will germinate into a very fine filament called a hypha. And when multiple of these hypha come together, they will form a network through hyphal fusion. And this network is called mycelium. And mycelium is the vegetative body. And, and that's nature's decomposer. What mycelium does is it gathers nutrients from the decomposition of all the organic matter out there. And those nutrients will later be used to produce a mushroom. Now, when conditions are right, uh, it will form a hyphal knot, a primordium, and then multiple different stages till we get to a mature mushroom, which will have gills or pores, and they will produce the spores. So at that point, we have, a, have completed the fungal life cycle. But what we need to remember here is that our plant parts are spore, mycelium, and mushroom. Now, there's a number of different fungal parts that are actually sold as medicinal mushrooms. Uh, one of those is mycelium, and mycelium is often produced in liquid fermentation, which is just essentially uh, a nutrient medium that is aerated and kept at a certain temperature, and then the mycelium will grow out, uh, and within five to ten days there will be a large mass of mycelium. At that point, the liquid will be removed, and the mycelium will be will be taken out and dried to a powder. Many of these products are produced in China right now. One of the most common is called Cordyceps CS4. Now in the United States, companies actually grow mycelium on grain and that product is done in sterile culture under laboratory conditions and, and also at times it's called a mycelium biomass. And these particular mycelium products, there again, it's a moistened grain. It's heat sterilized inside a, a plastic bag, inoculated with live mycelium. The mycelium grows over this sterile grain for a period of 30 to 60 days in a sterile lab. And at the end of the grow out period, the myceliated grain is put on racks to dry and then ground to a powder. But what you have to remember about these mycelium products is the mycelium is not separated from the grain, which becomes part of the final product. So U.S. mycelium products are not pure mycelium. They're actually myceliated grain. Well, oftentimes these companies will call their myceliated grain mushroom. Is it really a mushroom? Well, as you know, a mushroom is a plant part of this fungal organism. Mycelium and spore are also plant parts. So myceliated grain is actually uh, what we would consider fungal tempeh. And for those of you who are not familiar with tempeh, tempeh is a food product, cooked soybeans colonized by fungal mycelium. Now the m most common a fungal part sold as a medicinal mushroom is the mushroom itself and that's been used for thousands of years in traditional Chinese medicine. And Namex produces mushrooms naturally. We produce mushrooms on natural substrates, uh, primarily wood, uh, and that, that gives us the precursors in the wood that are 
uh, necessary to actually produce the medicinal compounds. Now, remember, substrates uh, and what something is grown on is never uh, harvested with the mushroom itself. And all mushrooms are harvested by hand. Mushrooms are high in beta-glucans and mushrooms do not have any starch. Mushrooms are 100% fungal matter and they're also high in secondary metabolites. Uh, these, uh, some of these would be reishi and chaga triterpenoids. I've got shiitake mushrooms in my hand here. These are tremella mushrooms and they're growing on a sawdust log. This is the lion's mane, again growing on a sawdust log. And this is my son Sky and I in a greenhouse where maitake is being grown. Here I'm in a reishi, uh, an reishi farm, and these reishi mushrooms are actually grown on a small wood log that is buried in the ground. And these are Cordyceps militaris, which is a very famous mushroom. And other parts that are sold are sclerotia, and a sclerotia is a mass of, a hard mass of mycelium that normally will grow underground. Poriococcus is one of those. And then we have chaga, which is not a mushroom, it's not mycelium, it's not sclerotia. It's actually a canker that's formed from a fungal invasion of a birch tree. And that birch tree in trying to resist this uh, fungal pathogen will produce this canker. And the canker is mostly melanin in that black outer layer and then wood, decomposed wood, but very little mycelium. Now, an analytical fingerprint for a medicinal mushroom should be based on the primary active compounds identified by scientific research there must be sufficient amounts present to allow their use as a quality control marker. And that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for markers. The, the primary active compounds in medicinal mushrooms are 1,3,1,6 beta D glucans. And they are what is responsible for immune system potentiation. And that means to strengthen our immunity. So they enhance our resistance to infections from bacteria, viruses, molds, uh, by activating immune cells like macrophages, NK cells, and helper T cells. They make up close to 50% of the cell wall of, of a mushroom. Ergosterol, which is similar to our cholesterol and is present in the mushroom cell membrane. It's a precursor to vitamin, vitamin D present in all mushrooms, and, and it is something that the grain industry will test their stored grain for molds and they will use the ergosterol test to do that. Triterpenoids are anti-tumor, antiviral, antibacterial, strong antioxidants that are also beneficial for liver dysfunction. They occur in many polypore mushrooms, especially reishi and chaga. Ergothionine is a naturally occurring amino acid and powerful antioxidant that accumulates in organs that are predisposed to high levels of oxidative stress. And that would be the liver, kidneys, eyes. Humans do not produce ergothionine and must get it externally. Now mushrooms contain some of the highest levels of all foods and that makes ergothionine a very good marker as well. And then we also measure alpha-glucans. Alpha-glucans are polysaccharides and are mostly starches so they can unmask, this test can unmask carriers like maltodextrin, starch, and even the grains in these myceliated grain products. Mushrooms contain no starch, only a small amount of glycogen. Now we use what's called the Megazyme test, which is specific to mushrooms and yeast. Uh, mushrooms have the 1,3,1,6 beta-glucans. It does not measure grain beta-glucans like oats, which are a 1,3,1,4 beta-glucan. It's accurate and repeatable, peer-reviewed, and um, again, 
beta glucans make up 50% of the cell wall of a mushroom or even the mycelium. They provide us a clear fingerprint for every species and the lack of beta glucans will indicate a lack of fungal tissue. Now, mushrooms do not contain starch, and this is very important. Starch in a mushroom product would indicate the presence of an adulterant or other materials such as residual grains. Now, the other thing that's important is a polysaccharide test will actually report alpha glucans, which are the starches. So this is uh, important to know uh, the polysaccharide test is not a good test for a mushroom product. Now this is the Megazyme test that was peer reviewed in the Journal of AOAC International in 2016. AOAC is the organization that sets and validates standards for all different types of products. In 2016, I presented my analytical finger printing method to the International Society for Mushroom Science. And what I demonstrated in my work was that mushrooms and mushroom extracts show a consistent range of beta-glucans and alpha-glucans. So they, the beta-glucans are from 25 to 66 percent and the alpha-glucans are from 0.1 to 6 percent. So very high beta very low alpha. Myceliated grain products showed significantly lower beta-glucan values and much higher alpha-glucan. And so beta-glucans in these myceliated grain products were from 0 to 13 percent, whereas alpha-glucans were 24 to 70 percent of these products. And those are the starches. So this was exactly the opposite of what we expect to find in a medicinal mushroom product. When it comes to ergosterol, and again, this will give you an idea of how much fungal matter there is. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the actual mushroom values. And at the top, you have the myceliated grain values, which are approximately one-tenth the amount that is in a normal mushroom. So that just shows you the lack of fungal matter in those products. Now in 2019, after having tested 167 samples, I presented my fingerprinting method to the 10th International Medicinal Mushroom Conference. And in this, at this time and with this research, I had finally developed our analytical fingerprinting method. And I'm using analytical testing data of four major constituents in a medicinal mushroom product. Uh, and, and by doing that, I can actually get a standardized fingerprint. And I've used beta-glucans, alpha-glucans, ergothionine, and ergosterol. And this fingerprint is based on the dried mushroom. So that is the baseline for testing. Everything must conform to what we would normally find in a dried mushroom. And this fingerprint can also be used to compare unknown products. So if you have a product that someone tells you is a mushroom product, you can just take that product and run it through our test method and find out whether it has the compounds that it should have. And in this case, you can see uh, it goes from anywhere from 30% beta-glucan for cordyceps to 50% for reishi. And, and again, low alpha-glucans in all of these different mushrooms that we've tested here. Now, chaga is interesting because it has very little fungal matter, and we can see that with our beta-glucan test, which is right around 10%, very low alpha-glucan, very, very low ergothionine uh, with some ergosterol. <clears throat> now, the chaga that is actually grown on grain has very low beta-glucan and very high alpha. Now, these basic parameters are going to hold right on through for all the mushroom products, high beta-glucan, low alpha, uh, the presence of ergothionine or ergosterol, whereas myceliated grain products, or even in this case with cordyceps, the 
liquid fermentation of mycelium, we see low beta glucans, uh, a high alpha in the myceliated grain, and a low alpha in the liquid fermentation product. Same for lion's mane. And reishi, what's interesting, it has the highest level of beta glucans. Uh, again, a very low alpha, and our myceliated grain ratio has 6% beta and 43% alpha. In all of these fingerprints, what I want you to notice is that in the first row, we've got tremella dried mushroom, and that's our standard. And then underneath it, in this example, we've got our tremella mushroom extract, and we're trying to make sure that our mushroom extract matches up to the actual dried mushroom. And here it, it's uh, pretty much in line. Now this is a really interesting uh, slide and, and graph because what it shows you, it shows you a, a cordyceps mushroom, the blue line, the actual mushroom. And then we have all the other lines show uh, myceliated grain products and the grain that they're grown on. And so what it shows you is fats are very similar, protein are very different, uh, carbohydrates are quite different, beta-glucans are totally different, and then the alpha-glucan, which is the starches, are totally different. But the thing I want everybody to look at here is the fact that actually the mycelium that is grown on grain has the exact nutritional profile as the grain itself. For those of you that want to get deeper, uh, my Namex white paper is available here and, uh, and on our website, and that will give you a lot of background information on what I've just been talking about. Thank you very much.